Imagine you run a busy restaurant where the same waiter has to serve you from start to finish, so they remember your order and everything that you need, but here is the catch. If that waiter leaves for a break or there is a shift change, no one else knows what you ordered and this means that you'd have to start over with someone new who doesn't know your order. This is similar to how a stateful architecture works. In a stateful architecture, you have some users who are accessing your website through servers, and each server remembers your session like login data, preferences and so on. But the problem is if one of these servers goes down like the server 3 goes down and your next request goes to a different server like server 2, that server won't have any clue about who you are because it doesn't have your information. So everything has to be handled by the same server for the session to work properly. And we can solve this by using a stateless architecture. If you imagine the same restaurant, but instead of keeping track of each customer's order by memory, these waiters now write down their order on a piece of paper. This way, if for example waiter 3 goes to a break, any other waiter can pick up the paper and serve this customer. That's basically what happens in a stateless web server. In a stateless system, no server remembers who you are. When a user sends a request like logging in or visiting their profile, this server doesn't keep that information. Instead, all of these servers store the user's data somewhere else like in a shared database. And this way, when a different server handles your next request, it can still fetch your information from this database and then get back to you without any issues. Let's use an example you might relate to, which is shopping online. In a stateful system, let's say you connect it to server 3, and now you add a few items to your shopping cart. This server, which is handling your session, will remember your cart. And if you come back later, your items will still be there, but only if you connect to the same server free. But if this server is not available at that time, then you will be redirected to another server, which won't have your information about your shopping cart. And you will basically lose all of your cart items and you have to start everything from scratch. But if we compare this to a stateless system, your card is saved in a shared database instead of this server free storage. So now it doesn't matter which server handles your request, because every server can pull your card information from the shared database. And this makes it easier to handle traffic and server issues, because no one server is responsible for storing your session. So as you can see, stateless is more scalable. If your website becomes super popular, you'll want to add some more servers to handle all of this traffic. And in a stateful system, it's harder to scale since each of the user's session is tied to one specific server and you have to make sure that users are always connected to the same server. This can also get hard to manage, especially if one of your servers goes down or you need to add a new server to handle the incoming traffic. But in a stateless system, adding or removing servers is very easy because each server can handle any user request because all of that information and data is stored somewhere else like in a shared database. And if you think about any large platform like social media apps, if Facebook or Instagram were built on a stateful system, you'd need to connect to the same server every time you refresh your feed or check your messages. And obviously that wouldn't work well with millions of users. But in a stateless system, any of these servers can handle your request because all of your data, like your messages, photos or posts, are stored in a shared database. And this is what makes stateless systems much better for big apps that need to scale and handle lots of users at the same time. So to wrap it up, stateful means our server remembers who you are, but it's harder to scale. And on the other hand, stateless means no server remembers, but that's okay because your data is stored in a database and this makes it super easy to scale. And if you're building apps that need to grow fast, stateless is usually the way to go. If you'd like to learn more about how stateless architecture is used in big production apps, then be sure to check out this video next.